The suffragist movement engaged women of all races, often leading to conflict, but also helping bring issues of race to the forefront. The story of an influential African-American suffragist from Minnesota is told in a new book by author William Green. Dr. Green, for viewers who might be unfamiliar with Nellie Francis, could you just give her a brief introduction for us? Yeah. Um, Nellie Francis is a native of Nashville, Tennessee. She and her family moved to Minnesota, St. Paul in particular, uh, in the mid-1880s. And uh, she would be a resident of, of Minnesota, St. Paul, uh, for the next 40-some years. How did Nellie first become interested in women's suffrage? I think it, it goes back to uh, the kind of upbringing that she had from her parents. Her father was one of the first blacks to be elected to the city council in Nashville soon after Reconstruction. And um, I, I think that her parents uh, spoke a lot. And her grandmother, who she got really close to, she would survive. The grandmother would survive till age 117. Um, they spoke a lot about racial pride, and they spoke a lot about equality. And so I think that um, the whole notion of women's suffrage uh, was just sort of a logical progression for her. Uh, it was not only about dignity, but it was about equality and self-empowerment. Uh, it wasn't just about race, but it was about uh, uh, acquiring the skills to be a, a full citizen as a woman, and she saw it as wrong that women should be excluded from that. Now, shortly after the battle for the women's vote was won in Minnesota, there was the the horrific lynching in Duluth. Um, this year, we are commemorating that the with the Clayton Jackson McGee events. Um, Nellie Francis was really moved by that and was a key driver in a quest for anti-lynching legislation. Speak to that a little bit, Professor. Yeah, uh, well, she had also been very active in, in anti-lynching work, uh, mm -hmm. policies and whatnot. Um, she was one of the leaders to ban uh, Birth of a Nation in St. Paul for that reason. Um, and, and a lot of her, her, her speeches uh, were given towards dealing with anti-lynching actions and, and, and behavior and politics and whatnot. They went hand in hand. Women's suffrage and anti-lynching work went hand in hand. The Women's Suffrage Ratification Certificate was signed by the governor of the state, Governor Bernquist, in, in 1919. So less than a year later, you have these lynchings in Duluth, which affirmed to a lot of African-American women we're going to see this again. This is reconstruction all over again. You know, once we talk about women's suffrage or any kind of suffrage, we're going to see an uptick in white supremacy and, 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 and violence against the race. And what Nellie had to do was to not only deal with the, the energy around fighting lynching, but also doing that within the context of inspiring black women to use the ballot for the first time. Um, so she's kind of dealing with two different forces, sometimes going in opposite directions. Um, she not only played an active role in, 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 in making lynching a crime, she drafted the legislation with her husband uh, and lobbied uh, the legislature to get the thing passed. Here, um, Clara Ulin and, and others, Emily Noyce, for example, um, and others, played a very important role. They, they, they contributed their organizational skills, uh, lobbying skills, to Nellie's movement to, to get an anti-lynching law passed. So what Nellie had learned and acquired from the lobbying effort to get suffrage through, um, she was able to transfer into getting the anti-lynching law passed. And success of that in, in, in 1921 was that all but one legislator in both houses, only one legislator voted against the anti-lynching bill. She was successful in doing that. But Nellie was the one who spearheaded that effort. Why was it important to you uh, to tell her story? And what's the message that you hope it conveys to today's audience as we look back at historic events uh, like the passage 
of the women's vote and like the, the lynching that took place in Duluth? Well, I, I think that there are a lot of lessons. Uh, obviously, uh, it's important to be engaged. It's important to, to, to fight against a sense of powerlessness. Um, it's, it's important to take seriously the, you know, what is happening with other corners of the community, even though one may not belong to it. Um, and in addition, with regard to Nellie, she was a person who oftentimes uh, inspired as much ad adversity, as much jealousy as she did admiration. Um, she, did not, she was oftentimes by herself in her struggles. Uh, she didn't often have a lot of support from her own community. And uh, that did not dissuade her from moving forward. Uh, so a lot of her accomplishments, I think all of her accomplishments, are, 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 are due to her own sense of intestinal fortitude, so to speak, uh, to go it alone if need be, but to do so because it was the right thing to do. I think for that reason, she's my hero. This is a person who knew three presidents. This is a person who, uh, whose home, who, who, who knew not only Booker Washington and Du Bois and Ida Wells and all of these giants in civil rights, but she, but she was close to the women's movement as well. You know? and, she was, and she knew that it was difficult to bring black women and white women together. Um, and that she would, re, you know, she would be attacked for it. And she did it anyway. She did it anyway, while taking care of the people she loved. You know, that's the other thing. She, she, was, she remained very close to her family. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was from her family where she got grounded and where she would be revitalized and healed from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it, she, she shows me the value of loving the people who love you. You know, never forgetting the significance of family. Um, so th those are the kinds of things I take from her. And those are the kinds of reasons why I think it's important for us to know Nellie. All right. Well, Dr. Bill Green, author of Nellie Francis, Fighting for Racial Justice and Women's Equality in Minnesota. Thank you for bringing this story back into the light. We appreciate it and much. appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. Thank you for the invitation.